Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. Uh, this is Kashif Kamran and I welcome you all to a very important session uh, which is about confusion in writing additional information procedures evidence and actions. Now this is just a quick short session of uh, how you can overcome your misconceptions or problems you have when you look at these particular requirements in the AAA paper asking for additional information procedures evidence and actions so let's let's start on with this clarity session on how you can be good in four now you can follow me uh, on my youtube channel for some very exciting videos on AAA on different aspects of AAA including my webinar you can follow me on my facebook page as well for updates and key tips and techniques on the AAA paper uh, if you have any issues you can email me at my email id and you can connect with me on my whatsapp as well so that's how you can reach me so let's let's start on with the agenda uh, which is to look at the confusions in writing additional information procedures evidence and actions now i'll be giving you one illustration uh, and this is just a crisp 30 minute session just to give you a good mindset and i hope this example will help you out uh, i'm using my word file uh, which i'll share with you um, at the end of the session and uh, I just want to give you an exercise on this particular agenda. Now, when you look at the past papers, in the past papers, you must have seen a couple of times examiner ask you recommend the additional information. Now, recommend the additional information is very common in the question number one, uh, and even when a question comes on uh, due diligence. Now, in the question number one, recommend the additional information used to come uh, quite a lot in uh, papers prior to September 18. But since September 18 paper, uh, the tendency of asking additional information in question number one has gone down. But still, you find it in due diligence as well. Uh, and even though I've covered this requirement a couple of times in my previous webinars, uh, I have brought clarity to this requirement a couple of times in my previous webinar. But still, I believe this is a frequently asked question. Whenever I look at the students' uh, WhatsApp groups, uh, they tend to be confused between additional information, procedures, evidence, and actions. And then, then they look at the examiner answer and they, they start to increase the, uh, the stress level. Now, I just want to make a quick crisp clarity on the subject matter. Now, uh, when you look at a scenario, for example, um, and a scenario asking you to recommend an additional information which the auditor would need or recommend the procedures or recommend the evidence or recommend the actions, you, you first need to understand uh, the requirement so that you can put into the right answer. Now, just, just to start quickly, uh, for example, if you start first, the objective the objective is to bring a clarity on uh, additional information how you write it up and the clarity on writing procedures the clarity on evidence and the clarity on actions okay let's let's start on with the exercise now when you look at the clarity perspective uh, and you want to see how to go down with it now first of all uh, a question asks you recommend the additional information which you will need which you will need and the question continues okay the next time the question asks you recommend the uh, principal audit procedures or as simple as that recommend the procedures you should perform on whatever and the question continues the next question will ask you uh, explain the evidence you should expect to find in the review of the working paper file in respect of something the file can be on anything question mark or the question ask you just one minute or the question ask you to uh, recommend actions necessary 
we have must have seen this jargon so many times in so many questions of the AAA paper. Now, actions is one thing, evidence is another, procedures is another, and additional information is another. Now, try to understand it quickly. Suppose uh, there is a situation of uh, a goodwill and the examiner asks you to recommend additional information which you will be needing to perform your work on goodwill. Now, first of all, you need to understand that additional information is taken uh, prior to the start of work. And obviously, it is taken prior to the start of work or it is taken at the planning stage. And it is, uh, it is, it is, sorry, taken from the management. You obviously, you need the information from the management. Who will give you the information? Obviously, the management. Now, additional information is come is, is set at the time when you're planning or is set at the time when you are about to start your work and the examiner asks you what additional information will you need to perform your work? Now, the focal point of information is that you need information, right? So if you look at information, uh, information as simple as that is the document which uh, you need from management to perform your work. Management to perform your work. Now, the information is a document which you need to which you need from the management to perform your work, followed by the reason uh, of using this document, followed by the reason of using this document. Now, just just an example. When you're writing an information, the focal point of an information is a document, right? You you cannot start information with a action word like review, recalculate, discuss, because that will automatically become a procedure. Now, for example, if I give you an information on goodwill from like a September 18 exam paper, suppose in a September 18 exam paper, if I can just take a paragraph for an example. Just give me one minute. Okay. Now, suppose there is a exhibit four in the September 18 paper on a determination of goodwill on the acquisition of Lynx company, right? And uh, a goodwill was recognized of a hundred million dollar. Now, examiner, for example, ask you in this question. I'm just taking uh, just taking an example, right? Examiner ask you uh, recommend the additional information which you will need uh, to perform your work on goodwill when you come to the audit. Now you are at the planning stage and you want to take some additional information on goodwill, uh, which you will be needing, uh, which will help you later in the audit of the goodwill. Uh, now, when you look at the goodwill uh, in the in the goodwill, they have acquired they have acquired Lynx company, right? Acquisition of Lynx company. Now for the acquisition of Lynx company, which must have been taken place during the year, and it's a very important decision of the management to acquire a company. And on the acquisition of this company, a goodwill of $100 million was recognized. So the very first thing I would be needing from the management uh, in terms of an information, uh, I would be needing from the management, number one, uh, the board minutes uh, to confirm why would I be needing the board minutes from the management? Why would I be needing this information from the management? I would be needing this information from the management to confirm the approval uh, and the rationale and the rationale of acquiring Lynx company. So I, I would ask management that can you kindly give me the board minutes because I will be needing the board minutes to confirm the approval and the rationale of acquiring Lynx company. This is the information see the information needs to start with a document but if i say review the board minutes it will become a procedure I, i'm not writing a procedure i'm writing an information so the focal point of an information is a document with a reason which you need to in the management so i need to take a document from the management the board minutes what is the reason to confirm the approval so this is my additional information Number two additional information which I will be needing from the management is because they acquired a subsidiary and on the subsidiary they paid a cash consideration and whatever cash consideration they have paid 
uh, and they have a contingent consideration as well which they will be paying later and they have a total consideration so obviously when you must have acquired a company there must have been a purchase agreement uh, in the purchase agreement i will get to know the total consideration you have to pay uh, as a company and from the purchase agreement i will also get to know what is the underlying basis of a contingent consideration when you will be paying the contingent consideration so on and so forth so i can take another document from the management the purchase document confirming the total consideration paid or payable because some of some of the consideration was paid and some is to be payable purchase document confirming the total consideration paid and payable and the underlying conditions of the contingent consideration and the underlying conditions of contingent consideration it is contingent right so what are the basis of contingent so i can look at the purchase document so purchase document becomes the document or becomes the information and every information is followed by a reason confirming to confirm now one more example uh, I would be needing another document from the management because they have paid a cash consideration. They've already paid a cash consideration, which is approximately $80 million. So for this cash consideration, I would take from them a document known as a bank statement. And I would, I, when the management asks me why you need a bank statement, I'll say I need a bank statement to confirm the uh, amount of the cash consideration paid. So that's the reason and the management will say, okay, I'll give you the, I'll give you the bank statement. If you have a solid reason, the management will give you the information. If you don't have a solid reason, you will not get the information, right? Because this is all the information which you have to take from the management. Only when you justify the management, the need of the information. So when you write additional information, obviously the additional information is a document number one, and you should have a reason why you need this document. But you also need to remember that when you are writing additional information, a very important rule of thumb is, just give me one minute. Uh, the very important rule of thumb is when you're writing the additional information is that the additional information, number one, has to come from case it has to be case specific now see if i was writing an additional information on a goodwill i was taking it from the case case specific now when you are writing an additional information it should start with a document it should start with a document because the document is the information and then you should have a reason why you need this document what do you need to confirm from this document so that is one mark right one mark per additional information now if you look if you look at an imaginative list of information a lease agreement a cash a fixed asset register uh, a breakup a breakup of the research and development cost they're all documents right so there are so many documents which you can find in the case study pertaining to the situation presented to you by the examiner now you can have uh, the due diligence report as in the case of the goodwill if you read later uh, you can have a cash book you can have a fixed asset register you can have a breakup of the operating expenses uh, the, these are all additional information right which you need from the management in a given context so the the principal part here is the information so you need to remember the information is a document which you will need from the management to perform your work later when you come to the audit followed by the reason why you need this document reason why you need this document why you need this document so that's additional information now if i convert the same situation suppose the examiner asks you on goodwill the, the example we were taking and the examiner asks you recommend uh, recommend the procedures on goodwill now we the 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 case we read uh, in the same case uh, we we know that if i am performing a procedure on goodwill uh, and not not additional information now the i have given you so many times that when you are writing a good procedure a good procedure should start with an action it should have a source and it should have a purpose 
And obviously a good procedure number one has to be case specific. So if I am writing the procedures now, so how would I write a procedure? Uh, my procedures would be number one. Back to the case, same case. I'm just reading it for your clarity. Uh, acquisition of links company. So for the acquisition of links company, my first procedure would be review the board minutes. Review the board minutes to confirm the rationale and to confirm the rationale for acquisition, why you acquired it, and the approval. And the approval. See? Now, what's the difference between an additional information and a procedure? The procedure starts with an action review action. It starts with an action and it has a source board minutes. It, it was the source and it has a reason confirm confirm was the reason. So it has a source. It has a purpose. The next uh, they paid the uh, they acquired a subsidiary links and they have to pay it they have paid 80 million dollar and they have to pay another, another contingent consideration few years later so i can say okay review again review the purchase agreement review the purchase agreement to confirm the total amount of consideration to be paid uh, including the contingent consideration and its basis including the contingent consideration and its basis see i started again with review it becomes a procedure the procedure has to start with an action that's very important now my third procedure would be that i would review the bank statement to confirm the amount of cash consideration paid that is dollar 80 million in the context of the case so review see it starting with a action so it has to start with an action the actions are what do you know the actions the actions are either you review something you recalculate something or you discuss something you uh, analyze something etc action action you need to start a procedure with an action and every procedure should have a source it should have a purpose uh, every of my procedure had a source a purchase agreement it has a source a bank statement it has a reason confirm it has a reason confirm so i'm not deviating you from the rules of a good procedure and obviously every procedure is worth one mark per procedure if it is a good procedure right if it is a bad procedure then you might get a zero and a half, zero point five or a zero good bill so a same situation right so you should know how you start writing additional information and how you write a procedure obviously uh, these are two different questions in the triple a paper uh, in two different contexts, but I'm just taking one example and converting them so that you learn how you take a start so for a Sorry for a procedure you take a start from a from an action and from an information you take a start from the Information see I didn't put a verb. I started directly with a document. I Started directly with a document so that's additional information, right? And it's very common in the question number one prior to September 18 exams. And it's very common in a question on a due diligence. A lot of time examiner asks you recommend the additional information. You should need to perform your work on due diligence. Okay, now the same example on evidence. Suppose you get a question in exam on goodwill, but this time the question on goodwill is asking you to write evidence in the working paper file. So we have the scenario, the same scenario we're using so far, goodwill. And suppose the examiner asks you, uh, re explain the evidence. Explain the evidence you should expect to find in the review of your working papers on Goodwill. So you are a manager, right? And you're reviewing the working papers on Goodwill. 
what evidence will you expect to find in the working papers now the question on evidence comes at the stage of finalization when you are finalizing the audit so it's a finalization and a completion stage of the audit when the manager performs a review of working paper so when the manager is performing a review of the working papers what evidence will he expect to find in the file of his subordinate like a senior the senior has worked on goodwill what evidence will you expect to find now when you're writing the evidence in the working paper file in the exam and suppose the topic you need to perform evidence is goodwill now the first evidence the manager would expect to find in your working papers would be a copy of the board minutes now see how I started it the copy of the board minutes to confirm the approval and the rationale and you continue writing the full statement after the same as we wrote above copy see the moment i brought the word copy see i started writing information with a document i started writing a procedure with a verb review and i started writing a evidence with a word copy because uh, the board minutes belongs to the management so when I put it in my working paper file, I have to take a photocopy of that and put it in my file. The next number two. Uh, I need to have a copy again because I had another document. Uh, I need to have a copy of the purchase agreement uh, to confirm and you write the same reason I wrote above. Or you can have extracts of the purchase agreement uh, uh, copy or extract because it's an agreement so not just you have a copy you can also have an extract of the agreement so that what will be in your working paper in your working paper either you will have a copy of the agreement or you will have the extracts of the agreement so if you don't want to write the word copy you can also write the word extracts uh, of the purchase agreement that's also valid so that's a working paper of the auditor right extracts of the agreement okay the last thing we had a bank statement so we can have a copy again of the bank statement copy of the bank statement and we come across with the same reason to confirm so the manager will look at the copy of the bank statement and what will the manager confirm from the bank statement and the reason same see how it started now obviously this is not a class where I'll give you all the forms of working paper uh, in my normal lectures in my routine lectures which I do for my full classes uh, I, I do I give you every form of working paper currently you're looking at a copy and an extract there are so many other forms of working paper right like, like results like uh, uh, breakups uh, but again this is just a quick session just to give you a clarity between writing things how you write things like a working paper additional information and a procedure same situation see the forms now when you're writing uh, evidence the rules for evidence remains the same again the evidence has to be case specific you cannot get evidence out of the case uh, you need to start evidence with uh, a working paper starts with a working paper now the working paper starts with working paper so it starts with the working paper either a copy or an extract and there are so many other forms of working paper which i cannot cover in the situation today uh, start with a working paper and then it should have a reason it should have a reason for the working paper why why the working paper is in your file what what it is confirming and every uh, working paper is worth sorry every evidence is worth one mark one mark per evidence you write in the working paper so that says how you go down with it so there are different ways of how you pick now when you look at the examiner answer this is a frequently asked question and want to address that before i come to the action there's a frequently asked question that when you see examiner answers when it, this is a student asking open the inverted comma when i see the examiner answer examiner write procedures in an evidence question or in a procedure question write evidences or when writing when writing additional information uh, examiner even write uh, evidences 
bracket inverted commas close <coughs> sorry and the student becomes student becomes confused now examiner uh, holds uh, lots of uh, tutor conferences in which the examiner interacts with the tutors who are teaching the subject matter and examiner provides them clarity uh, after every two years there is one conference uh, between the examiner and the tutor and uh, in the, those conferences the examiner makes things clear when the tutor asks a question like such to the examiner that we get a question from a student and the student seems confused on this what's the clarity the examiner says uh, firstly the examiner says uh, my answers examiner says my uh, answers this is my means examiner right examiner says first of all my answers are tutorial guidance so don't get distracted with them the tutorial guidance so they can include in anything number two examiner says there is a thin line between all three of them means information procedures and evidences examiner says there's a thin line between them right it was just changing the start rest remains the same so examiner says there is a thin line so examiner says uh, i would not penalize too harshly a student who in a procedure answer writes evidence or the vice versa now for example examiner is saying suppose you're writing additional information right you're writing additional information on goodwill just as we wrote above and you know that the additional information needs to start with the document and mistakenly when you were writing the additional information uh, you started writing the additional information like review the board minutes in the next you wrote purchase agreement which is fine and in the next you wrote bank statement that's perfectly fine and you come out of the exam hall and you realize oh i wrote a procedure and then i wrote the information examiner is saying i will not penalize you harshly if you do a mistake so in an additional information question where you where you were writing three informations mistakenly one of them was a procedure examiner is saying i will not penalize too harshly but if you write all three procedures in a question on additional information that is wrong mistakenly you wrote one procedure and you wrote the other like information that's fine so examiner is saying i will not penalize you too heavily for that T take another example bring this down take another example you were writing uh, you were writing uh, additional information on goodwill the first point you started with review which technically is wrong but examiner is saying i will not penalize you too harshly because there is a thin line in the next uh, you wrote purchase agreement mistakenly in the third you wrote copy of the bank statement which by default is a evidence but you wrote that in additional information again the examiner would not penalize you harshly for it because eventually at the end of the day you can still find the information can you still find the information yes bank statement is the information agreement is the information minutes is the information but you started it wrongly mistakenly you started it with a verb review mistakenly you started it with the word copy and you come out of the exam hall and you become you you are stressful no 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 need to be stressful examiner is saying i will not penalize you too harshly because there is a very thin line between how you write an information procedure and an evidence but the better rule is stick to the rules you should know that an information should start with an information you should know the procedure should start with the verb action you should know that the evidence should start with something like a copy and an extract and the list goes on try not to do the mistakes but if you do don't be worried so mistakenly when you were writing a procedure you write the word copy mistakenly when you were writing uh, evidence evidence uh, suppose you're writing uh, evidence on goodwill you are writing uh, evidence on goodwill suppose this is a question on evidence on goodwill and you know the evidence has to start with copy extract or something like that and mistakenly you said review the board minutes now that's a procedure but examiner says he will not penalize you too, too harshly you wrote a purchase agreement but mistakenly you forgot to write the word copy of a purchase agreement examiner will not penalize you too harshly for that 
and you wrote the word copy of a bank statement which is a wonderful evidence so if you do mistakes one and two in your answer that's fine but don't make a habit that uh, examiner is asking you to write evidence and you purposely write all procedures examiner is writing asking you to write procedures and you purposely write all evidence just don't do that penalize too harshly means mistakes one and two mistakes in your answer mistakenly you uh, overlap procedures with evidence or you overlap evidence with procedures or additional information that's perfectly fine but stick to the rules stick to the rules so that's that's how you go about uh, in exam paper for additional information for procedures and for evidence which is a regular feature of your 100 marks paper now the last thing which is more easier actions actions has no relevance to what we've done just did on goodwill so i need to do an extra extra exercise for actions now when you come across actions you must have seen this word in ethical and professional issues and quality control issues even uh, examiner ask you recommend actions uh, actions can come in a reporting question actions can, can can come in an ethical professional and a quality control question so actions is a very regular feature of exam paper where the examiner ask you recommend actions necessary in the context of the case now you should know action 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 should start action should start with verb action should start with the verb right like discuss like review it should start with an action right you're writing an action so how can an action start without action verb discuss review but you need to understand the purpose and you need to understand the difference between a procedure between a procedure and actions because examine uh, examiner says students are confused between writing procedures and actions because both starts with action procedure starts with an action action starts with an action but the purpose is different action procedure is performed to gather evidence review the board minutes so procedure is performed to gather evidence but action is performed to resolve an issue that is why it comes in an ethical issue professional issue quality control issue question or it comes in a reporting question where you have to solve an issue prior to issuing a qualified opinion or you need to solve an issue with the management prior to issuing an adverse opinion action is performed to resolve an issue that that is why it comes in a reporting question where you have an issue and you need to resolve it prior to issuing a qualified opinion it comes in a reporting question or it comes in an ethical professional and a quality control issue question epq ethical professional quality control issues action so action and procedure both starts with action because obviously you 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 need to start them with actions but the difference is the purpose the purpose you perform a procedure and the purpose you perform a action so when you write actions the basic purpose of an action is to resolve an issue so uh, when you write an action again the actions have to be taken in the context of case so whatever is the problem in the case you need to see that then you need to take an action to resolve the problem to resolve the problem and the action can actions because most of the time the action is that you need to discuss with management so most commonly most commonly mostly uh, actions starts with uh, discuss because uh, how would you resolve a problem you will only resolve a problem when you discuss with management or you resolve a problem when you discuss with those charged with governance you will resolve a problem when you discuss it with the audit committee these are how you resolve things up right so mostly uh, discussion seems like a very good action but yes uh, actions can also be review you review something uh, etc but when we are performing procedures, there are so many procedures. We observe, we recalculate, uh, we analyze, uh, we discuss. Even discuss is a procedure. The purpose of a procedure is to gather evidence. So when you're writing an action, the focal point of an action is that you are taking an action to resolve the problem. Keep that in mind. And again, you get one mark per action. Now, even the safeguards, the safeguards you take in an ethical issues, safeguards when you write ethical issues is, is also an action. Safeguard is also an action. 
so when you're attempting a question on ethical professional and quality control issues uh, you you give a lot of recommendations even which are part of your actions so this is uh, just a basic idea uh, the purpose of this session was not to teach you something the purpose of this session was just to discuss with you uh, a lot of time the student face problems in exam paper when it comes across uh, writing additional information or writing procedures or writing evidence or writing actions you need to understand the hundred marks paper will have two of them three of them one of them in every exam setting it's better you understand the difference and even if you do a mistake as i was guiding you above examiner will not penalize you too harshly but know the fundamentals how you start a procedure how you start an evidence how you start an action how you start an information you, you should know those fundamentals right so you can again reach me on my uh, different social media presence if you have any queries relating to this topic uh, i will be more than welcome to resolve them uh, in the in the constraint of the time i have as a tutor and uh, the purpose of the session uh, was just to guide you about some clarities which can really be helpful at this point in time when exams are near and that can helpful to you in uh, resolving some of your confusions you have in writing these things in the AAA paper. So I'm Kashif Kamran signing off from this uh, session which was to bring clarity on the issues student face in the AAA paper and I'll be coming back with more such sessions to bring clarity ahead of your exams coming up. Till then, take good care of yourself, study effectively. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.